Hello again and welcome to another Show Me tutorial. In this one we're going to be looking at some of the muscles around the shoulder and in particular some of the more superficial muscles. So we're going to be looking at four muscles today that are grouped together in your books in a single section I think. Uh, and they are the deltoid muscle, which I'm sure you may have heard of before. We're going to be dealing with pectoralis major we're dealing with trapezius and one you may not have heard of is latissimus dorsi now we're going to be taking these muscles in pairs we're going to be taking the deltoid muscle and trapezius muscle together and the reason for that is that they are the two most superficial muscles that form uh, a contour for the shoulder and also they have a common line of insertion and origin which kind of mirrors each other which is along the clavicle and the acromion and also spine of scapula so it, take, it makes sense to, to do those two as a pair and likewise it makes sense to do pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi as a pair because they form the anterior and posterior superficial aspects of the muscles, superficial muscles covering the axial skeleton and they insert onto the humerus in, uh, in regions that are, are fairly uh, proximal to each other. So. What we want to do is begin by looking at the deltoid and trapezius. So let's start with the deltoid. And let's just run through a few parts. Deltoid with a D. So let's just begin by having a look at what the deltoid does. Well, we can very simply, if we were to describe its functions very basically, we would say that the deltoid attaches the scapula and clavicle to the humerus. That's what we'd say if we had to give a very brief account of its overall function. Now this muscle has what's known as a base and the base is the wider part of the muscle and it attaches to the scapula and the clavicle. That's where it's attached to. It also has an apex, so a kind of triangular part to it where the fibers converge. And it's the apex which is attached to the humerus. Okay, so as I said before, its origin is along a line which I can show you on the when we come to our first image, which is a, a continuous line which is along the scapula and the clavicle and also includes a structure known as the acromion. Its insertion is onto something known as the deltoid tuberosity and if you haven't heard what a tuberosity is a tuberosity is just a an enlarged bump on a bone which is specific for muscle attachment and the deltoid tuberosity is specific to the deltoid attachment to the humerus so deltoid tuberosity on humerus I'm just going to put H there for humerus what's its function its major function is to ab, not add, that's wrong, ab, just testing you there, abduct the arm beyond a level of, so it's beyond greater than a level of 15 degrees. And the reason for that is that the first 15 degrees is accomplished by a different muscle. This is a muscle which belongs to the rotator cuff group known as supraspinatus. So its main job is to abduct the arm beyond a level of 15 degrees. Its innovation 
is by a nerve known as the axillary nerve. And this nerve is a branch of the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and you'll learn about the brachial plexus I'm sure in practicals and we may even be able to cover the brachial plexus at, at some point in a show me tutorial. I think I'll give that job to Ellie. So that's our deltoid and it's probably worth mentioning actually just one last point about the axillary nerve is that it, it wraps itself around posteriorly around the surgical neck with the circumflex artery together and they are very vulnerable to damage around the surgical neck because that's where many fractures of the humerus occur so the axillary nerve is implicated uh, often in fractures of the humerus. Okay that's our deltoid muscle we should now move on and talk about the trapezius muscle. So our trapezius muscle. Now the trapezius muscle has an extensive origin on the axial skeleton which includes sites around the skull, the tips or the uh, spinous processes of some vertebrae and also some of the associated ligaments. So remember that the trapezius is a trapezoid shape muscle so it has fibers traveling in three directions and is therefore that's how it gets its name trapezius but it's also sometimes referred to as being a diamond shape as well so let's just deal then with its origin actually before we do that we should probably just as we said before start with a very simple description if we had to say to somebody, well, what does it do? It attaches the scapula and the clavicle to the trunk. Okay, so while the deltoid attached the scapula and clavicle to the humerus, the job of the trapezius muscle is that it attaches to the, scap the scapula and clavicle to the trunk and there it has a range of movements. But let's start with its origin as we did and let's do things in the same order if we can as we did with the deltoid. So its origin then is extensive and we're going to be quite simple here and we're going to say well it involves the base of the skull It involves vertebrae, particularly the spinous processes, and I'm going to abbreviate that as SP, and also some ligaments as well. I'm going to be a bit more specific about the precise origin when we come to the diagram, but for now we'll leave it there. We've got the insertion, of course, and the insertion is some structures that we've heard about before because it mirrors the origin of the deltoid muscle which is this line that we can draw which includes the scapula plus the clavicle plus that structure the acromion and there's a line that we can draw and we'll see that on the diagram so that's the insertion now what's its function it has a range of functions but should put functions because of the direction of its fibers. First of all it's a powerful elevator of the scapula and therefore the shoulder so elevates shoulder. It's more of the superior fibers. So they're superior fibers. It also has the job of well, during the elevation of the scapula, it can also extend the reach superiorly. But we're not going to write that down as a separate function. I'm going to keep it quite basic here. And then we're going to move on to the middle fibres, which retract scapula. So that's the middle fibres do that. And then we've got our lower fibres, and their job is to depress scapula. fibers so because we've got this tra trapezoid or diamond shaped it means that we've actually got one 
to three parts to its function. That leaves me just to mention the innovation and the innovation of trapezius comes from one of the cranial nerves and that is cranial nerve 11 and that's also known as the spinal accessory nerve Just so we don't get confused, it's getting a little bit pushed for space now. So I'll just draw a line around that. So the innovation to this muscle is via cranial nerve 11. So here we've got our two muscles, deltoid and trapezius. And now what I want to do is take the basic information that we've learned about them and put them onto this diagram. And this diagram shows you a posterior view largely the axial skeleton we can see the scapula in here we can see the clavicle this of course is the humerus we can see the vertebrae running down each side up here we can see the skull in there as well so what we want to do is actually we want to be able to map on these two muscles now we're going to start with the deltoid, but before we do anything at all, we're actually going to draw a line, I'm going to draw it on both sides actually, this line that represents the point in which these two muscles meet, and this will help you remember exactly where they attach, and for now we're just going to draw a line that represents this part of the clavicle here, so we're going to go around part of the clavicle here in blue, around the acromion, and down the spine of the scapula. We can do that on the other side as well. And this line is important because this is where the deltoid originates and it's where the trapezius inserts into. Now we can be a bit more specific if we're going to begin by talking about the deltoid. Do the deltoid here first. The deltoid, we can be a bit more specific and we can say that it's actually, yes it goes along that line of the clavicle, the acromion and also the spine of the scapula, but we can be a little bit more specific and say well it goes across the inferior edge of the crest of the spine of the scapula, the lateral margin of the acromion and the anterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle only. Now that's being a bit more specific. Its fibres, its fibres will travel down like this and attach to this part of the humerus which if you remember was known as the deltoid tuberosity and so that's where the muscle would attach that's the deltoid tuberosity in there and I'm not going to draw it in on the other side so we now can deal with the trapezius muscle the trapezius has multiple origins as we said about before so we can start to have a look at some of these so the ones up on the skull here that we can barely see up here where I draw a line across here would be two particular landmarks for attachment and that would be the superior nuchal line and also something known as the occipital protuberance. You, know, you don't need to worry too much about that. Just know that it attaches to the skull. We're also gonna have some attaches to the spinous processes, which you can see in here, along the vertebral column as well. So let's just remove those. Now, not quite sure what's going on with this diagram, but certainly that looks to me like a bifid spinous processes, a spinous process, so I'm gonna assume that, that is in fact C2. And not C1, which then enables me to identify if we count sequentially down to, so this is number two, three, four, five, six, seven, that the attachment here would be to spinous processes around C7 all the way down, and this diagram goes down as far as T10 but all the way down we can't see as far as T12 and that would also attach to the related supraspinous ligaments as well. 
So between the superior nuchal line and the occipital protuberance and C7 would be a ligament and that ligament I'm going to draw in in blue is called ligamentum nuchae and that's because of the cervical curvature of the spine we have a ligament that stretches from the skull, the back of the skull from the occipital bone down to the spinous process of C7 which is where we get the attachment of the fibres of the trapezius. So we get a continuous line of attachment from up here all the way down this ligament in blue and then attached to the spinous processes, each of these spinous processes from C7 all the way down to T12 which goes out of view on this particular diagram. So that's the origin and the insertion of course is onto this line that we can see in blue over here which is this line which includes part of the clavicle and also the acromion and also the spine of the scapula. So if we remove some of my drawings here we can actually have a go at drawing on the muscle itself. So we're going to have the muscle which is going to be attached all the way down here in blue going beyond where this arrow is going. We're going to see it coming down in a triangular shape here to attach Actually, maybe not quite like that. I'll have another go at that to attach along here to the clavicle, to the lateral one third of the clavicle, and we're going to see a triangular shape continue down here. And we can start to see the direction of these fibres. Notice that these are the superior fibres coming down. Let's do them in a different colour. We we'll do them in red. Then the ones in blue here are the middle fibres and then the green ones are the inferior fibres like this or attaching along that line that we've drawn in here and I should probably do that in a different colour now so let's do that in the grey which specifically related to the trapezius of course is actually the superior edge of the crest of the spine of the scapula of course the acromion again and the posterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle. So you can see here, if we go back to the deltoid, you can see here how it would be responsible for uh, abduction of the arm, but of course it's abduction beyond 15 degrees. And with the trapezius, hopefully you can see with the direction of the fibres here, you can see how we get elevation of the scapula from the superior fibres, which are here. The middle fibres here are going to offer some level of... Uh, of retraction and the inferior fibres here are going to be able to depress the scapula and the shoulder girdle. So hopefully that gives you some overview of these two muscles. I'm going to carry on and talk about the other two muscles that I mentioned which are pectoralis major and latissimus dorsi in a follow-up tutorial. Uh, in the, so do look out for that one and I hope that's, this one's been useful. Bye for now.